Good evening, everyone. I said good evening. How is everyone this evening? It's so wonderful to look out and see all of your faces in person off of Zoom. I have the honor now of getting our program started. Please join me and rise for the American Anthem performed by Nina Zeitlin and the Hatikva performed by Cantor Chaim Dovid Berson. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleam, whose broad stripes and bright stars Thank you. Cantor, Nina, thank you so much for kicking off our program on quite literally such a beautiful high note that was so very special. And now it is my honor, my privilege, to officially welcome all of you to the ninth annual gala of American Friends of Soroka Medical Center. Welcome, everyone. My name is Tara Rosenblum, and I'll be your mistress of ceremonies this evening. I've already had the chance to speak with some of you and make some new friends, but for those of you who I haven't connected with yet, a little bit of my cliff notes. 
I'm a longtime anchor, reporter, TV host at stations all across the country for the past two decades plus. These days, though, I am very happily planted here in New York. I love this state, I love this city, I love my job, and one of the best parts of my job, I view it as a perk, is getting to connect with so many magnificent charitable organizations all across the country and here at home. And the ones that are always nearest and dearest to my heart are the ones that support Israel. I lived and I worked for a long time in Hon HaSharon many, many moons ago. And I had a big dream after college that I would make Aliyah. But you know what they say, we plan and God laughs and Hashem clearly had other plans for me here in New York as a reporter. But I will tell you, working as a journalist on the front lines of this pandemic for the past two years, my profound sense of appreciation for our medical staff, our hospitals, and the science that supports them is beyond measure. It's beyond anything I could attach words to. So needless to say, when I was asked to participate in this evening, this uh, event this evening from one of my girlfriends, it was an automatic yes supporting our medical heroes working on the front lines in a nation that has such a big part of my heart. My connection, my passion for Israel, though I do not live there, will never fade. And trust me when I tell you that I understand the importance and what's at stake of the mission and why we are all here this evening. So thank you from the bottom of my heart for having me and thank you to Debbie and her family. So yes, it warms my heart when I look out at this packed ballroom, one of my first events I've emceed in person for far too long, and see all of your smiling faces. We so appreciate you spending your Monday evening with us tonight. We are honored here tonight by the American Friends of Soroka Medical Center's Board of Directors and professional team who work tirelessly to prepare for this event tonight. We have the Head of Innovation at Soroka, Dr. Amit Frankel. And we also have with us here this evening, the Chairman and the CEO of Pfizer, Dr. Albert Borla. And of course, our two amazing honorees, Dr. Jay Selman, and Pedro Lichtinger. We are so excited to celebrate the two of you this evening. Now trust me when I tell you we have such a special evening planned for you. We just ask for you to share the excitement and maybe your selfies are too on social media throughout the evening, on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. We'd love for you to help spread the word of the great work we're doing here tonight. We have a hashtag all ready to go, Soroka Friends. We have that? Hashtag Soroka Friends. I'll be checking on my Instagram to see who's tagging us tonight. Because all of us here tonight, we're all unified in one goal, right? We are here to salute and support the only medical center in the southern region of Israel, a vital institution which has been at the forefront of these unprecedented and challenging times that we have all endured as one family. Please note that your presence here tonight not only impacts the residents of the Negev, you are also supporting scientific breakthroughs that will touch lives all across the globe. You know, the founding father of Israel, David Ben-Gurion said, it is in the Negev that the creativity and the pioneer vigor of Israel shall be tested. We are here to continue to ensure that his vision becomes a reality. And yes, trust me, we realize it takes so much passion and so much commitment to support an organization on the other side of the world. 
But the board of directors, the Friends of Soroka, has that passion and that sense of purpose in abundance. They know it is both a privilege and a responsibility to serve Soroka. Please join me now in welcoming two outstanding leaders, board president, Caroline Franklin Freed for tea, and executive director, Rachel Heisler Scheinfeld. American Friends of Soroka plays a vital role in connecting our American community with this major medical center. It is thrilling to see the difference we have made over the years in supporting the hospital <clears throat> with exciting new projects. I was initially drawn to Soroka because of their world-class expertise in genetics, which is of particular interest to me as my aunt Rosalind Franklin was instrumental in discovering DNA. Genetics is one of the many centers of excellence at Soroka. We could not accomplish what we do without the partnership of generous friends like yourselves. Today we are here to help assure that the new innovation center will become a significant game changer in medical technology and breakthroughs. This is crucial for the future development of Soroka and for me medical advancement globally. Your support makes a real difference and what could be more rewarding than saving lives and changing the future, future of medical care? Seeing everyone here this evening validates our mission and I'm proud to be a part of this amazing team and organization. We are happy to welcome you into our Soroka family. Thank you, Caroline. It's a testament to Soroka that some of the most prolific medical and scientific minds in the world are gathered here with us tonight. And that's an, also an indication of the importance of Soroka's mission, as well as the great respect and affection that we all have for tonight's honorees. I am delighted and thrilled to offer my personal congratulations to Jay Selman and Pedro Lichtinger. A moment of introduction and gratitude. Please meet Puzzy Leviton, our Director of Development. Thank you, Puzzy, for all you do to elevate Soroka and tell our story with passion and art. Please meet Rahel Shamailova, our Marketing Manager. And Debbie Gaz. Debbie Gaz our office manager and event coordinator. Truly a dream team. So Soroka Medical Center is an ideal place to do research. It has a rare combination of a unique and enriched data stream as we were partners in creating electronic medical records and established the Negev Biobank. We have the math and computer science power of Ben Gurion University. We have a high-tech hub right down the road from Soroka, and of course we have the Army intelligence spaces nearby. So there's a, yet another element that informs and accelerates our research, and that is the pioneering spirit inspired by the resilience of the Negev. It's the spirit of collaboration and the extraordinary humanitarian mission that comes from serving a profoundly diverse region. Over the years, we have accomplished so much at Soroka. We've decoded scores of rare genetic diseases. We've established the Negev Autism Center and opened the newest comprehensive cancer center in Israel. Just imagine what the future will look like and what we can bring with our new clinical research building and the new innovation center designed to cultivate collaboration and inspire novel solutions. Every day, miracles happen at Soroka. It's an amazing thing to witness. Whilst tonight we couldn't take you 5,730 miles away to see Soroka firsthand, 
So we created a short video to help you get acquainted with the hospital that we love so much. Soroka Medical Center was founded 60 years ago to provide health care solutions for the residents of southern Israel and meet the needs of the diverse populations living in the Negev, which constitutes 60% of the country's land area. Today, Soroka is the second largest hospital in the country and serves over one million residents. Soroka is at the forefront of science and technology. Its devoted employees work continuously to provide advanced, high-quality care, always placing patients and their needs at the center. In its 60 years of existence, Soroka has developed from a small hospital into a leading university medical center that is a strategic asset to the state of Israel, one of the country's leading medical centers and a vital component of the Israeli health system. Soroka plays a critically important role in treating large numbers of soldiers and residents in emergency situations. Welcome, friends, to the Soroka Annual Gala that can finally take place in person with fewer COVID limitations. I am sorry I cannot attend myself, but my presence is required at the hospital due to a significant fourth wave of COVID. Israel has been called the innovation nation, and justly so. And there is no place better suited to develop innovation in healthcare than Soroka Medical Center. Next year, we will see our research building and our innovation center. Our innovation center will be built in the center of our campus. And the general idea is a busy clinician will walk down from the ward, will meet a nurse from another side of the hospital, a researcher from the university. Someone will come from his high tech company, be it in Beersheba or be it in Tel Aviv. And they can sit together and work on our data and our expertise and our knowledge and come out with the brightest new ideas to further science. Thank you for joining today, and thank you very much to our great partners at American Friends of Soroka, who partner with us for years, help us develop the campus, help us reach uh, our vision, and fulfill what we think should take place in the negative. And welcome to Soroka as soon as possible. Today, Soroka Medical Center provides solutions in a broad range of specialties, and cares for some 750,000 patients a year. During the COVID-19 pandemic, Soroka has played an active and significant role in treating the victims of the disease in the southern region and assisting other hospitals in the country. Soroka's virology laboratory uses the most innovative technologies and conducts tests using an innovative method that makes it possible to save time in diagnosing new patients. Specially equipped departments have been opened for COVID-19 patients and are manned by staff trained to provide care that meets the highest medical standards. Upon receipt of the first vaccines, Soroka provided vaccinations for the medical staff and then for the general population. Our hospital serves the entire population of the Negev on its own. It is clear to us that in order to meet the task in a dignified manner, all possible means must be used. Thus, the field of innovation enters the hospital, especially during this period of time, during the COVID-19 pandemic, bringing with it capabilities that constitute a power multiplier in all the services provided here. In the coming months, Soroka is looking forward to a period of unprecedented development with the construction of new buildings, the opening of new services, and the advancement of new medical technologies. Soroka is a recognized leader in scientific and medical research and a significant partner in the establishment of Israel's first innovation district. The Soroka Center for Clinical Research will equip Israel's most promising physician researchers with the laboratories, resources, guidance, and administrative support they need to initiate transformational patient-centered medical research for the region, the country, and the world. For example, Focusing on the game-changing promise of digital health, Soroka's Center for Clinical Research will provide physicians and researchers with state-of-the-art laboratories, an invaluable trove of unrivaled medical data, and access to the Institute's biobank and resources. Hello. Dear friends, we are in our old medical library. It served us well for the last 50 years and have spent numerous hours with my books here, first as a young student and then as a young physician. However, the world around us is changing, but the spirit of humanism and dedication to our fellow citizens, which is guiding us from the birth of Soroka, is leading us forward. The tomorrow of innovation and cutting-edge research at Soroka, the new research institute to be built on our campus is almost here. 
With your involvement and help, we're confident that Soroka will continue its path of excellence and leadership in this new and exciting world of medical research and innovation. We invite all of you to join us in this journey. Thank you. At Soroka, our teams maintain our leading position in providing optimal medical care by investing heavily in research. Our healthcare service providers are constantly developing by seeking ways to improve quality of care and expand the services they provide by adopting cutting edge solutions and technologies. Dear friends from the United States, we thank you for sharing our goals and values and for being proactive partners. Together, we will bring about breakthroughs in research and significant advancements in prevention, diagnosis, and treatment for the residents of the Negev, for Israel, and for the whole world. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is what separates Soroka and its staff from all the other facilities of its kind around the world. I hope you enjoyed that video that was prepared specially for us this evening. Speaking of the tremendous impact of Soroka, and for you to really further understand why we are all here tonight, I'm pleased to introduce the head of critical care outreach team and the Head of Innovation at Soroka Medical Center, Dr. Amit Frankel. He flew in from Israel to be here with us this evening and is going to share with us some of the exciting developments happening at the Medical Center. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. That's a great honor for me to be here tonight. As you probably know, our uh, Director General, Dr. Kodesh, usually comes here, but uh, this year, because of the pandemic, uh, his hands are full. So uh, with your permission, I would like to send him our best regards and our appreciation for his uh, leadership during these difficult days. Thank you. So I was born and raised in uh, Israel and I went to uh, medical school at the uh, Ben Gurion University, just next to Soroka. That's uh, where I met my uh, wife, Sipi. By the way, she's a psychiatrist. That's why I'm so relaxed and cool most of the time, even though I'm a critical care physician. And when I graduated the uh, medical school, I had four years of internal medicine residency in Soroka. And right after two more years of critical care uh, fellowship in Soroka as well, so you may uh, say that I'm a pure Soroka production. Uh, a year ago, I uh, became a head of innovation in Soroka, and I'm really proud to show you this innovation center where physician, nurses, physiotherapists, our medical staff would sit together with people from the high-tech industry, and obviously with the researchers just across the road from the Ben Gurion University together to produce a better future for uh, our patients. I would like to give you a very brief example for the uh, innovation in Soroka these very days. So about two years ago, when we started to treat this COVID patients, we obviously had to supervise them through control rooms, and in those control rooms, we had many monitors and many, many screens, and soon enough, we realized that it's almost impossible for us to be able to find the specific patient who needs our help. You have so much data coming out from those monitors and screens, so many colors and numbers and lines, that it's almost impossible for the human brain to process all this data. That's where we've decided to cooperate with ELTA. ELTA is one of the largest military industries in Israel, but they can do all kinds of magics, not only military magics, and indeed, Together with them, we have created this system, the Blue Angel. This angel 
actually can collect the data from the screens and from the monitors and can process the data using artificial intelligence combined with deep learning algorithms and can finally point the specific patient who needs our help. And I think that this is a wonderful example for health innovation. And this example really shows how health innovation can really save lives. Thank you very much for coming here tonight and thank you for your ongoing support and shalom from Israel. Thank you. Thank you, doctor, for traveling all this way to be with us here this evening. And now, for tonight's first honoree, Dr. J. E. Selman. Before we present him with the Inspired Leadership Award, we will share a short video with all of you highlighting some of his many accomplishments followed by remarks from Susie Stern. Susie is a community activist who I know many of you know in this room. She is an internationally recognized leader in the nonprofit sector who has advised everyone from presidents to several New York governors. Let's learn more now about our honoree, Dr. Selman. My trip with Soroka Medical Center started several years ago. Caroline Friefertig and her husband Shlomi uh, uh, had been friends for a long time. And Caroline said, I think this is a good organization for you, Jay. You're interested in medicine and health in Israel. It's a good fit. Jay has truly been a gift to Soraka. I was very proud to serve on the board with him. I'm very proud that he became the president and did an amazing job. It was the first time I'd ever been president of a board. I learned quite a bit through that experience. We improved our operations so that we could work smarter and, and more efficiently. I think we responded to the challenge of the COVID epidemic in some really unique ways. We started crowdfunding to buy additional equipment such as respirator and pulse oximeters that the hospital needed. And one of the most important things was our Ask the Experts series, which involved having panelists from both uh, New York or the US and from Israel, sharing their views and experience and knowledge about important topics. Rehabilitation at Soroka is really important. Improvement in rehabilitation uh, at Soroka was a natural fit and it's something I look forward to continuing. Rehabilitation of injured soldiers is really critical. The dedication of the hospital and staff to everybody, it doesn't matter if you're Jewish or Russian or Ethiopian or Bedouin, everybody gets the same kind of treatment and that's an admirable standard. I feel very honored. It is not something that I ever thought about or sought to attain. My participation with Soroka has always been to work on Soroka's behalf, to see how I could play a small role in, in advancing that. So I'm definitely honored. I also have to say I owe a lot to my wife, Patty, who stands with me and behind me and coaches me. I'm getting the award, but there are others that are with me. This is a treat, and you just saw Jay Selman, my friend. In August of 2014, during Operation <clears throat> excuse me, Protective Edge, I was in Israel on a fact-finding mission visiting wounded IDF soldiers, exquisitely cared for at Soroka Medical Center. And when the warning sirens went off those day, that day, there was absolute precision and calm getting people to safety. 
So when my friend, Jay Selman, asked me if I knew anything about Soroka Medical Center, as he was thinking about getting involved with it, immediately I encouraged him, because this was a hospital that served the Negev, where the needs of an incredibly diverse population, as you've heard, were growing every single day, and more attention needed to be spent to this remarkable institution. And that brings us to tonight, when we honor Jay's dedicated service to Soroka. Dr. Jay Selman is a brilliant doctor and educator who has been a friend for almost 40 years. I have known him as the adoring husband of Patty, the loving father of Jeremy and Ari and their families, and the Saba to his grandchildren. He is a lover of music and the outdoors, and a man of great decency, wisdom, kindness, who is a devoted and caring friend. I call him a mensch. And it was on a visit to the Blythdale Children's Hospital where Jay served as chief of neurology that I understood that Jay is seen as a mensch by all he knows. As we walk through the halls of this newly renovated hospital, every doctor, nurse, and most of all, every child, no, oh, <laughs> and he takes care of me all the time. I think. <laughs> But most particularly, every single child, no matter how profoundly challenged they were, gave Jay a hello or a high five. He was in his glory. He was glowing and energized. It was clear that these patients, his work, his healing, were his secret power. How blessed his many patients, colleagues, and students are to have him in their lives. And how lucky for all of us that he found his calling early in life, and that today, when he actually could be uh, retiring a little bit, slowing down, he has started a whole new chapter of his life at Columbia as professor of clinical pediatric neurology. You can and should read his impressive resume, but no resume can adequately describe the man whose heart and soul and immense intellect goes into everything he does, and that is what he, exactly he gave to all of you at Soroka. A few weeks ago, we read the story of cre creation, Bereshi, a story that we know may not be literally true, but it does describe the world as it ought to be. Jay Selman is that very special person who works every single day of his life to create a world as it ought to be, and is the perfect person to receive the Inspired Leadership Award tonight. everyone who is here with us and who has joined us virtually. Thank you so much for your generous support of this gala and for the Soroka Medical Center. Susie Stern, you and Jeff have been close friends for decades. Thank you for your very warm introduction. I am very moved and honored to receive this award. Thank you to our fabulous staff, especially Rachel and Pazee, Rachel and Debbie, and all of the volunteers. A special thanks goes to Caroline Friedvertig, to our hardworking and creative board of directors, and to all of our volunteers. Lastly, but most importantly, I want to thank my wife, Patty Kopeck, and our children, Ari, Julie, Jeremy, Kate, and our grandchildren, Ruby, Ava, Joshua, Misha, oh, Emma, Misha, and uh, Jacques, you are my inspiration and my motivation. Special thanks to Dr. Albert Burler, our esteemed honoree for tonight. He and his company have worked tirelessly to develop the first vaccination against COVID-19 and also the treatments for patients who contract the disease. Thank you. Thank you so much. 
Congratulations to my co-honoree, Pedro Lichtinger, our other honoree. We appreciate all your support and all you've contributed uh, to medicine and to this evening. But tonight is not about me. It is about people. The 1.6 million residents of the Negev which represents almost one half of the area of the state of Israel. It is also about the people who work at Soroka, the only hospital in the Negev, and you've seen the pictures. The nurses, the therapists, the physicians, support staff, and all of their families. They work under difficult, often dangerous conditions. They provide life-saving healing to all citizens of the Negev, Many are also involved in groundbreaking research in cancer, heart disease, ecology, environment, and many other fields. Each week, I receive a summary of five to 15 articles that are authored or co-authored by physicians and scientists at Soroka. They're not just taking care of patients, they're making active contributions that will benefit people all around. Tonight, is about our coming together to celebrate the accomplishments of Soroka and to prepare for even greater achievements. Please be as generous as you can, and thank you very much. Enjoy the evening. Everyone, another round of applause for the doctor. A beautiful honor for an extraordinary and humble man. Congratulations to you and your family. And now we have a special treat for you, a little entertainment to lighten the night. Did you know that it has been documented that dancing is not only therapeutic, but it also helps out our mental faculties and body movement, and it's an artistic way to heal the soul. Don't worry, I'm not gonna ask all of you to come up here and do the cha-cha. We have someone to do it for us. Please feast your eyes and enjoy the music while Austin and Nino, internationally recognized ballroom champions, entertain us. Austin and Nino, the dance floor is yours. Lo 
I didn't bet you didn't expect that, a little Dancing with the Stars action here at Cipriani's. Let's hear it for Austin and Nino, everyone. And now it is time for dinner. While you're enjoying your meal, I'd just like to ask you to keep your eyes on the screen right behind me throughout your meal and get ready to bid in our amazing live auction. We've got some really incredible experiences this year for you to bid on from some magical escapes to Israel and the Caribbean. We also have some VIP sporting packages where your ride back and forth will be a private jet. It's a lot of fun and amazing items this year, but what I want you to keep in mind before the bidding starts is how much we rely on your support for these miracles to continue each and every day in the Negev. We need you to give generously, and that is why we are all here tonight. For those of you who are watching us at home, we thank you for sending us in your proxy bids. We have our Soroka staff ready to bid and win on your behalf. Enjoy your meal, everyone, and I'll be back with you shortly.
It's so good to be back. I don't know about all of you, but I developed a bit of a golf addiction. With all the free time that I had, with the cancellation of every single charity gal of the last 19 months. And so I am just so happy to see all of you. It's just so good. And I felt conflicted when Pazit and Rachel said the first auction item was a foursome at Old Oaks. 6,700 yards from the tips. Beautifully manicured greens. Devilish bunkers. Bernie Madoff's old club. Which I think is cool. And she said, start the bidding at $2,500. And all I wanted to do was sell it to myself for 100 bucks. Because I want to go play. Old Oaks, but it's a charity event, so I can't do that. So I'm gonna begin the bidding for the foursome at Old Oaks with lunch at $2,500. And if you haven't yet found your paddle with your name on it, this is a good time to do so. And if you forgot, because you haven't been to a charity auction in 19 months, it's pretty simple. Finish whatever liquid is on your table. Wine is like the Gatorade of charity auctions. And I want to make sure you all are properly hydrated. Oh, now the paddles are being passed out. No shoulder cramps. Don't want to come over there and have to massage a deltoid. So where are all my golfers? Opening bid is $2,500. Every single swing will be infused with virtue. I broke 80 for the first. Is that a bid right there? It's so tough when you're passing paddles because it looks like a bid. Where are all my golfers? $2,500 for charity. Knowing when you're up on that first tee and you have the hope of breaking 80 for the first time. But you'll have some good luck on your side because you're playing for charity. No golfers here. Madam, welcome to the bidding pool. The water is nice. Dip your toes right in. Our first bid of the evening, paddle number 45. Thank you very much. The requirement for being a charity auctioneer, as you have probably noticed, is not height. You have to be able to luxuriate in a little bit of awkwardness while you wait for that first bid. Thank you. Our next bid will only be $3,000. We're at twenty-five right there. Our next bid for our opening auction item is $3,000. Are there any golfers here? And I will throw in because this is my second stroke of gala. I've had an opportunity to meet so many of the supporters and staff and doctors. I will caddy for you. I will lug that bag around or drive that golf course. I will get you all the infusions you need. $2,500. Is there any further bid at $3,000 right now? Fair warning, going once, going twice. The gavel is as high as it gets on my diminutive frame. And with paddle 48 at $2,500, thank you very much. That is sold. You put a young man in a tuxedo in a morning coat, and he just feels entitled to start talking. Hi, everybody. My name is C.K. Sweat. I'm a charity auctioneer, a.k.a. your favorite person this evening. 
We only have three more auction items. The next one is just actually just an awesome trip to Israel. My last time in Israel was 2018. I did not make it to Soroka on that trip, but we are bringing you to Soroka. We have two premium seats, two premium seats on El Al. There's going to be a VIP tour of Soroka with Dr. Shlomi Kodesh. You're going to be taken into the Negev by Soroka supporter Jackie Civic. We're going to take you to the Red Sea. We have two nights. We have two nights at the Kedma Hotel, which is absolutely glorious. Who? Who's going to take this opportunity to put a trip to Israel on the near calendar? Opening bid. Opening bid is only $5,000, and that is an absolute steal. None of you? There, paddle number 61 is our first bid. Well done. Can we have a counter bid, perchance? We're at 5000 The next bid will be $5,500. $5,500 to visit Soroka. Thank you. Was that a team effort right there? There's two hands, one paddle, nicely done. 59 it is. 61. Can I have a bit of 6,000, please? Can we, get a, can we get a tray of Don Julio shots to that table, please? If wine is the Gatorade of cherry auctions, I don't even know what tequila is. Can we get one more bit at 6,000, please? We're at 55 over here. 6,000 is next. Anybody else can jump in? Two premium seats on El Al. Nicely done. A2? That's Latin for your turn. We're at 6,000 right now. I heard that Shlomi is an incredible tour guide. Docent of the year in the Negev. Did they say no? You don't believe that? Jackie. Jackie will show you the Negev as you've never seen it before. Kedma Hotel. So we're at 6000 right now. Is there anybody who will jump in at $6,500? The flights alone are worth it. Fair warning. We're at 6000 6, Is that a bid right there? Is it? Yes, it is. P a paddleless bid. Is that, it looks like he was, had a napkin. That's cool. DIY paddle. 65 right there. Would you make it seven, please? One more. One more bid for the one point. Is that a yes? Oh, that's, that's a no. 245, you currently have the bid at 65. The next bid will be $7,000. $7,000. I think I saw a pal right there. Young lady, would you like to bid? Bidding knows no age. Gentlemen's bid at pal 245 at $6,500. Fair warning. Going once. Going twice. Sir, you got an absolute steal of an auction item. Thank you very much. $6,500 it is. <laughs> Halfway through. Getting nice and warmed up. Our third. Today was the first cold day of fall in New York City. Oh. <laughs> Jumbi Bay Antigua. Just picture yourself in that PowerPoint presentation when it got cold and you shivered a little bit. Secure your future warmth and happiness right now. Three days, two nights on the resort 
where Lionel Messi, the greatest soccer player of our lifetime, went on his honeymoon. I'm in 47 villas. I don't think there are any cars on the island. And we're throwing in flights. This, this is the post-pandemic vacation you owe yourself. Opening bid is only $5,000. i am going to go in increments of $1,000. We have $5,000 right there. Our next bid will be $6,000. We're at $5,000 right now. Who will bid $6,000? thousand dollars for one of the most exclusive Caribbean locales. I know it's been a while since you've been on a vacation. They're fun. They make you feel good. We're at five thousand dollars right now. I think we have some interest over here. A lot of negotiation. Smart. Six it is. Would you make it seven, please? We're at $6,000. The next bid will be $7,000. A new bidder on this side. I believe we have some momentum. $7,000. No, no, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Gentlemen, 8,000 it is. Would you make it 9,000? It's 8,000 behind me. 9,000 for your happiness. 9,000 for that vitamin D. Come January 23rd, the saddest day of the year. When all hope is lost, I am offering hope. 8,000 on this side. Would anybody else make it $9,000? 9,000. If not, I will sell it to my gentleman bid over here at eight. Give you a second more to contemplate just what it means to be on that white sand beach that first week of February in New York City. Going once, going twice, not yours, not yours. Sir, incredible steal right there, $8,000 it is, well done. Takes us to our last auction item this evening. In 2019, I did 101 of these worldwide. This lot that I'm about to sell would have made it into the top three, if not the number one lot. Mark Lazary is so cool. There's a 2018 athletic profile on what it's like to fly with him on his jet and 12 other passengers from Teterboro to Milwaukee and sit courtside to be with your feet on the hardwood and have Giannis Antetokounmpo, one of the most incredible not only, not only is he just a physical specimen, he's a deeply good man. I got to sit courtside for the Brooklyn Nets when the Milwaukee was in town. And being that close, I think about it so often. The opening bid, the opening bid, it's going to sound high, but this is actually a steal. The opening bid is $20,000 to I have paddle 222, thank you very much. $20,000 right there, well done. A trip on Mark's plane with Mark is, is worth more than the price of admission itself. 
Such a fascinating guy. Born in Morocco. Came to the U.S. when he was seven. The embodiment of the American dream. We're at $20,000, next to $22,000 to fly with Mark on his plane and sit courtside for a Bucks game. Is there any more interest for our last live auction lot this evening? You don't need to be a sports fan. You don't need to be a basketball fan. You don't need to be a Bucks fan to marvel in what this opportunity is. Because I guarantee if you go on kayak.com or Expedia, you cannot from your phone book a flight on Mark's plane. I am the only one. I am the only travel agent. 22,000, thank you very much. Nicely done. It does not matter if you are an Amazon Prime member, Jeff Bezos cannot get you this. I'm the only one who can get you on Mark's plane. We're at 22,000, the next it'll be 24,000. Remember, charity, it's for Oka. It's for the 1.3 million citizens in the Negev Desert. Very cool. Don't be intimidated by the gentleman with the three kids. I think he's bluffing. I think he can go higher. And what I'll do, we're at 22 right now. I'll cut you all a discount. I'm going to go for 23 for my favorite player growing up, Michael Jordan, in honor of him. Would anybody like to make a Michael Jordan bid right now of $23,000? Sir, if you are the winning bidder of this lot at 22, I just say congratulations. It's so cool. So, going once, going twice. Congratulations. That is sold right there. Very nicely done. That concludes the live auction and the program coming up. It's pretty remarkable, so thank you very much. CK Sweat, everybody. Thank you so much for being here with us this evening. And thank you all so much for giving so generously. That was so much fun to watch. I want you to keep in mind and feel good knowing that your contributions to the amazing Innovation Center in the Negev will help Soroka continue as a leader in cutting edge technology and medical breakthroughs. On that note, I proudly present to you a person who is at the forefront of medical breakthroughs and saving lives, hundreds and thousands, millions of lives, in such a profound way. The chairman and the CEO of Pfizer, Dr. Albert Borla. Dr. Borla is familiar with Soroka through the work the center is doing with Pfizer on real-world data related to the Pfizer-BioNTech COVID-19 vaccine. He has a special connection to our second honoree, Pedro Lichtinger, and will present him this evening with the Healthcare Champion Award. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tara. It is an absolute pleasure to be here to celebrate the lives and accomplishments of two extraordinary men. And while it is my true honor to introduce my good friend and mentor, Pedro Lichtinger, this evening, I would like to begin by congratulating Dr. Selman, 
whose leadership vision and understanding of the importance of forging strategic partnerships have helped advance this organization's mission of supporting outstanding medical care and breakthrough research at Soroka Medical Center. Congratulations, Dr. Selman, on this well-deserved honor. <laughs> As one of the leading medical centers in Israel, Soroka has been an invaluable partner to Pfizer and the Israeli Ministry of Health as we conduct real-world data studies of the safety and efficacy of our COVID-19 vaccine. These studies are helping, helping us stay one step ahead of the virus in the global race to end the pandemic. Soroka and Pfizer share a commitment to advancing cutting-edge clinical research to discover breakthroughs that will help people live longer, healthier lives. And the same can be said for our next honoree. And a man I'm proud to call friend, Pedro Lichtinger. <laughs> I could speak about Pedro's accomplishments, but I think you can read about them and his long and distinguished career in the program, so I won't repeat his bio here. Instead, let me tell you about the Pedro I know and the impact he has had on me personally and professionally. Simply put, Pedro is the one of the smartest people I have ever met. He is a brilliant businessman, an excellent negotiator, and someone who could always see the opportunities that others couldn't even recognize that exist. He is a creative problem solver who is most comfortable when thinking outside the box. Inside, in fact, when it is inside the box, he doesn't even like it. And he is an inspirational and compassionate leader who has greatly influenced the lives of those who have the good fortune to work with him. And I was one of them. In my personal career, very often I use uh, phrases that I have heard from great leaders. But uh, there are two sayings of Pedro that I have carried with me over the years. When I say them, people recognize me. In fact, they should recognize Pedro. I keep saying in Pfizer, growth never just happens. Growth is created. It was Pedro who taught me this. I keep telling my people that if you can't explain your vision, you don't have one. It is Pedro that taught me that. <laughs> I have turned to these sayings many times over the years. They have helped bring clarity not only to my work, but also to how I have communicated with others. Pedro also is a man of great conviction. As a proud Mexican and Jew, he has always encouraged others to be proud of their backgrounds, believing we can only do our best work when we are being true to ourselves. So I can recall a time many years ago when Pedro was my boss. And I told him about a speech I had given. After the speech, that was extremely successful, someone from HR at Pfizer came to me, raised my presentation, and suggested there is only one thing I could do to greatly improve 
for the next time, to take lessons to soften my accent so that I can sound more American. I mentioned this to Pedro, asking him what he thinks and telling him that I'm thinking to do it. And he told me that if I wanted to do it, of course, I should. But that's not something that he would do. In fact, he told me a story about a former boss of him who had told him once that he was an outstanding performer, but that he should consider having people refer to him as Peter rather than Pedro. That would significantly enhance his chances to advance his career in America. Without hesitation, Pedro responded, I'm not Peter, I'm Pedro. <laughs> that conviction has served Pedro well throughout his career and has inspired others to be their authentic selves as well. You have inspired me to be my authentic self, Pedro. As you can hear from my Greek accent, I didn't take the lessons. I followed Pedro's advice. And I didn't do bad in this country. <clears throat> His counsel served me well back then, and it continues to serve me well today. Pedro Lichtinger has had a profound impact on my life, and I'm truly grateful for his friendship, his counsel, and his guidance. And before I welcome him to the States, let's all of us enjoy a video tribute. When I was very young, my father told me, go out to the world and make a difference. And uh, that's what I have tried to do. Healthcare was a natural for me, and I've spent well over 30 years in the healthcare industry, most of it with Pfizer, where I had the privilege of being uh, the president of Europe, the president of global primary care, and I learned everything I know from those years at Pfizer. I am Pedro Lichtinger, and I'm honored to be today here, uh, where Soroka is honoring me in starting therapeutics uh, and it's a privilege to be here. We are unique in that uh, what we do is not common. Most startups and companies are trying to develop the next major medicine that will bring a cure. We are actually taking successful, well-established and recognized medicines and are making them better so that patients can live longer, better quality lives. Israel has always been one of the main centers of research, but it has lagged in development. And the difference is one thing is inventing a medicine, another one is to actually being able to carry it through the regulatory and clinical processes that most authorities around the world require. Research is the invention of a new medicine. And I think Israel excels relative to its size it has the highest number of patents of uh, activity. Once you have it, you need to regularly bring it through a process of development. Israel can have the same level of proficiency in development as it has in research. And I think this is a major step, what is happening at Soroka, so that Israel can lead in development as well as in research. Soroco is, is unique in its size and capabilities. It is able to link patient data with actual uh, clinical research and, and, and now more recently a very high best-in-class center for clinical research. The innovation is always at the heart of advancement in medical uh, science. What we are doing is bringing a series of technologies to deliver medicines in a different way to the human body so that we can improve the efficacy and tolerability of those drugs. I have spent my life trying to benefit patients and trying to globalize what healthcare is. I, I really am humbled by being chosen and by helping me share this vision 
of uh, trying to improve the quality of life in particular for cancer patients. And ladies and gentlemen, it is with uh, great pleasure that I welcome to the States our very deserving honoree, my mentor and dear friend, Pedro Lichtinger. Well, first, it is very touching uh, what Albert has uh, said about me, and I, I just want to say um, thank you, Albert. Um, I want to thank all of you for being here tonight to su in support of uh, the Soroka Medical Center. Um, it is really a unique center of uh, research that is going to or we're going to hear a lot about in the future. I have dedicated my life to make a difference in healthcare. And to be recognized by Soroka marks one of the most important moments in my life. Thank you, Soroka, my friends Rachel, Caroline, and Angela, who are on the board. You absolutely rock. I want to thank all my friends and supporters for being here. And I do want to recognize a few. This is why I'm reading, I normally don't read. First of all, and above all, my wife. So I would like to ask. Anyone that knows my wife knows she's not shy, so I will ask her to stand up. <laughs> it is that you have been by my side in good and in bad times. Most of them wonderful times. You followed me around the world and always inspired me to go forward. Without a doubt, I would not be here without you. Uh, I also want to thank my children, Stephanie and Jonathan, who are in the other table. You are my pride, and my brothers who came from Naples and from Mexico to be at this event. We also have with us my incredible co-founders, uh, Charlie Perperidis and Fotios Placogianis, who co-founded with me Start on Therapeutics. We also have my management and my board so I would like to thank them for, for being here. And um, we're going to make together block cancers a chronic disease that can be managed for the true long term. It's Star LLD, our flagship product, is going to be the cornerstone of maintenance and of future combinations to extend the life and, and of patients. We also have with us 
Tatiana Vimola, who touched my life for the last uh, 25 years. Uh, she works for McKinsey Consulting, where she's a senior partner, and she has advised me, supported me at many, many points. So thank you, Tatiana. <laughs> Finally, with us, we have Albert Burla that introduced me. He is, as you know, the chairman and CEO of Pfizer and a close friend. Albert, you have no idea how much your word and your presence touched me. Uh, as you can hear from my accent, I also did not change my accent. <laughs> and I have to say, since you, you decided to participate, every time I think about it, my Mexican side comes through. And Mexicans, when they get emotional, they do what we call el grito. And what that is, ay! <laughs> this is what makes life worth living. The, um, I admire you, and I am very proud of what you have become, what you have accomplished, Without a doubt, you are the best CEO in healthcare and are having an incredible impact on patients and the world and bringing back to Pfizer the pride that I had for working for this wonderful company when I was young. So thank you, Albert, and I ask all of you to thank him for what he does. Thank you very much. The eyes of the global health community have turned toward Israel in the last 19 months. The breakthroughs that Israel has achieved, they require investment. I wish I had more private planes to sell. I wish I had more golf rounds. I wish I had more trips to Antigua, but I don't. The next eight minutes, we need to raise an additional 100 thousand dollars an investment in the innovation that is happening at Soroka so with nothing more to sell but just a conviction from each and every one of you that investing in global health that all of our well-being is downstream of that center in the desert who here can raise his or her paddle at the top level, at the $18,000 level, at the high level, the level to be alive. And this room can come together and fulfill that promise of investment in innovation that is happening at Soroka. Who will be the first at $18,000? at 18,000. This is the time, now more than ever, health and well-being for the future made here tonight. At the $18,000 level, at the $18,000 level. And one more reminder, if there happens to be any liquid left on your table, finish it right now. At 18,000, at 18,000. Let's take it to the next level, the $10,000 level. Who here can hold up his or her paddle at the 10 thousand dollar level to help reach that hundred thousand dollar goal 
in support of innovation at Soroka. Look at that. 108, thank you. 239, thank you. Well done. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That's two commitments to the well being of the citizens of the Negev and global health downstream. Is there anyone else who can hold up his or her paddle at the $10,000 level now? Give you a moment more. Let's now take it down to the $5,000 level. If you can hold your paddle up at the $5,000 level, please do so now. Paddle number two. Thank you, Dr. Selman. Well done, sir. As he mentioned in his speech, paddle 209, thank you. Paddle number four, thank you. Can we have two more pledges at 5,000? Can we have two more pledges at 5,000? At 5,000. We're going to take it now down to the $2,500 level. If you can hold your paddle up at the $2,500 level, please do so now. 210, thank you. At $2,500. Is there a second pledge at $2,500? Moment more. We're going to try this level again, but down one order of magnitude. Is there anyone here who can hold up his or her paddle at the $1,800 level? 61, thank you. 64, thank you. Would you flip that paddle around for me, sir? Eight, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So well done. At the $1,800 level. I'm going to take it now down to the $500 level. If you can hold up your paddle, make a commitment. Ten, thank you. Six, thank you. Five, thank you. Three, thank you. 140, thank you. 14, thank you. My youngest bidder tonight, 26, thank you. 74, thank you. 73, thank you. 28, thank you. 31, thank you. 190, thank you. 193, thank you. Well done. 190, thank you. 192, thank you. 193, thank you. 31, sir. Jumbi awaits. And for our very last level, if you've given before, I give you permission to give again. At the $360 level, I would love to see an absolute deluge of paddles. 228, thank you. At 360, at 360, is there 142, thank you. 224, thank you. 194, thank you. 75, thank you. Young lady, nicely done. 19, thank you. I want you 145, thank you. Stay 208, thank you. 144, thank you. You've come together tonight to celebrate great humans in global health. You've come here tonight to celebrate an incredibly important institution in Israel. Stay part of this community. Stay part of Friends of Soroka. I hope to see you on the dance floor shortly. Thank you very much. Wow, thank you so much again for your generosity. We promised you a magical evening, and I think it's turned out to be just that. Please join me now in giving another round of applause. Stand up if you feel so inclined for our honorees this evening. Dr. Selman and Pedro Lichtinger.
could do better than that. There we go. Now I'm feeling it. Love it. And our honored guest, Dr. Borla, thank you for being with us as well. Your presence here tonight speaks to the incredible breakthroughs that happen every day in the Negev. And also while you're standing, a round of applause for the Soroka Dream Team that worked for many weeks to make this evening possible. You can take your seats now, thank you so much. Soroka Friends is a community of people who bond over a shared passion and a commitment to a truly life-saving cause. It is now time to celebrate our community. We're gonna dance the night away, I promise, in just a few moments. But first, put your hands together one last time for our gala's co-chairs, David Faramars, Kimi Abash, and Carlos Gutierrez. Good evening. We'd like to take a brief moment to extend our sincerest appreciation for your recognition of the unique and significant impact of Soroka. As you all know, Soroka is the only major medical center in the Negev, providing comprehensive health care to all of the region's diverse inhabitants. It is also one of the most innovative medical institutions, not only in Israel, but in all of the world. Importantly, Soroka is a place where often Israel's courageous wounded soldiers are taken to receive urgent and critical treatment. Soroka is a very special place. Your attendance here tonight is an example of the love and appreciation felt for this unique institution, not only in Israel, not only in New York, but across the world. Thank you for being here and thank you for your support. Good evening. I'm a proud member of the American Friends of Soroka Medical Center and honored to be co-chair of tonight's event along with my lovely wife, Hengame. <laughs> this special evening would not be possible without continuous support of all of you. I especially want to thank my fellow board members led by Ruth, Jay, Caroline, whose loyalty to this cause is unwavering. Our board, along with Rachel, Pazi, and the team, demonstrate the commitment it takes to move mountains. And to IJF, IJF, and my dear friends in Persian community, I am truly humbled by your ongoing support of Soroka and love of Israel. <laughs> this year, thanks to generosity, the Star of David was installed at the new cancer center at Soroka. I encourage you all to visit this amazing artwork and site. Thank you, good night, and have a great time. I'm Tara Rosenblum. Thank you for giving me the tremendous 
tremendous honor of serving as your MC this evening. It was such an inspirational night, and I'm thrilled to be here with all of you in person, and I hope to see you again next year, and who knows, perhaps on a future mission to Israel. Thank you, everyone. Enjoy dessert and dancing. Get home safe.